said we have a right to privacy and that an individual's right to live free from government intrusion in our private or personal information is natural, essential, and inherent. You know, I testified yesterday on a different bill and I brought this issue up and I want to bring it up again today. When you watch a sci-fi movie or you read a sci-fi book and you sort of see this dystopian future, sort of something we already see emerging in places like China, do you ever ask yourself, like if you're watching The Matrix, like how did they get from here to there, right? How do we create that dystopian future that someone like Katniss Everdeen then has to go fight the capital about, right? And I'm here to tell you the way that dystopian future is created is by people like you not understanding that this is a real risk. And if we introduce these things and we give the government too many tools, then the suppression will come naturally. It's fine for us to sit here, and of course everyone is concerned about crime and you're concerned about children and all of that. But you know what? Those crimes are solved that way already today. There are tools and we know that there are ways to solve these crimes. What these tools are going to do over time is they're going to start to be tied to things like our credit scores, and they're going to be tied to people like me who are not very popular with the police. So our US Constitution, as well as our New Hampshire Constitution, enshrines our rights to assembly, to privacy, and we really do need to think about, you know, is this the way we want to go forward? So our ability to move freely is one of our greatest freedoms. I was born and raised in South Africa under apartheid. And I was white, so it certainly wasn't as bad for me as it was for my compatriots. I was an anti-apartheid activist. I went to Nelson Mandela's inauguration, and I'm very proud of that. But I know that the police under apartheid South Africa would have loved to have this kind of technology. And you have to think about that. Because the problem is, as we sit here, you know, every day we come to testify, you approve all these laws. Every law we write, and every law you vote on, and every law that becomes a law in New Hampshire is enforced, and it is enforced by the police. So when we write too many laws, we give too many reasons to start to come after people. And it may just be someone you don't like because of the color of their skin, or the ideas they have. So there is a real danger with stuff like this, and I think this bill is an incredibly good place to start. Let's ban this technology, and if law enforcement does need exceptions, they can come over time and they can say, can we accept this one narrow thing? So we can say, no, we respect the rights of granite staters to have their right to privacy. Um, when I did a protest several years ago at the very place that the cameras are now going up in, in Manchester, you know, and there's chicken and egg there because you have to ask yourself why those cameras go up. Um, I read this piece and I'll end with this because I'm probably over my time. But, oh, two things. First of all, there's a Harvard professor who has now proven that most of us commit at least three felonies a day. We don't mean to, but there's so many laws that that is just the way the system works now. So keep that in mind. If you're committing crimes without even knowing you're committing crimes because we have too many laws, then if you have this system that can just track anyone, perhaps all of us will be in danger one day. Um, this is a quote from a former New Hampshire police officer and veteran, and this has to do with when there were lockdowns, and all of these things sort of go hand in hand, right? So 24 seven surveillance cameras, now we're gonna have the face, facial recognition portion. We're doing you know, town-wide lockdowns. But what this officer had to say was, the ability to move freely is one of our greatest freedoms. Does it make it easier for police if the entire citizenry, citizenry is locked down so that they can methodically search for the bad guy? Absolutely. Would it likewise make it easier for police if they were allowed to search our homes and properties without a warrant? Of course it would make it easier. Would it make it easier for police if they were allowed to beat us and question us for hours on end until we were so tired we confessed? Of course. The problem is we do not exist.
to make it easier for the police. The police exist to make it easier for us. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions. questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Jerry, is it? Um, you do understand the testimony that this bill would not prevent the use of surveillance cameras, only a facial recognition database, which it sounds like your lawsuit is based on just surveillance cameras. Yeah, so these things all do go hand in hand. You're correct, this bill only applies to the facial recognition, facial surveillance portion. So I look at it as a puzzle, right? If you're building a totalitarian state, what are all the elements you need over time to create that? So you need the cameras, which we now know are going up. There is a bill, there's an RSA that makes highway surveillance and camera surveillance in the state illegal. In my lawsuit, it partly hinged on that. And basically, we, we did get a court order, I, I lost the case, uh, but the order itself said, the judge generously said, we're in this sort of Kafka-esque circle where they can't do the surveillance until the cameras go up, so I can't prove they're gonna break the law until we let the cameras go up. So there is that sort of vicious circle, but a component of, of the 24 hour surveillance, so the cameras are gonna go up, and then the next step is going to be, let's use this surveillance technology and recognition technology. And I want to point out, you know, another example that came up was actually a woman I spoke to who uh, is out of the closet now, but she wasn't, you know, when she was younger. And she talked about how you could use this kind of technology then for someone who, who's in the closet who wants to go to an LBGT club or maybe you're someplace you're not supposed to be, and then you can build this case about this person depending on what's legal or illegal at that time. So that, I think that's a real concern too in terms of privacy. Thank you. 